<sighs> I remember eating back before, well, before I was just a brain in a jar. I miss being able to eat. There were a lot of things I could do back then. I could blend into a crowd. People wouldn't always be afraid of me. I miss those times. Sometimes I wonder if- Wait, wait, wait. Did, did Twilight just wipe ketchup off her face with a hamburger? I love this episode. There was a time when I used to dread Dave Polsky's episodes. I used to consider him to be the kinda crappy writer who just couldn't do anything right. But now, in season 4 with Daring Don't, Rarity Takes Manhattan, and especially this episode, it's undeniable that Polsky has been improving by leaps and bounds. And in the future, I think I'm going to start looking forward to more of Polsky's episodes. So let's get talking about this episode. So the episode starts off with Twilight teaching the cutie micro and what is that? Man, have I missed that box. The addition of this diagram in the back here is great, because it shows that the show hasn't just forgotten about the box this whole time, but instead it implies that Twilight has been working on cracking it over time in the background of the season. So Twilight is teaching the cutie my crusaders some various skills, for learning's sake, as she puts it. Sweetie Belle is practicing magic, Scootaloo is learning mechanics, and Apple Bloom is brewing potions. This is interesting, because these are all different skills than the ones that Showstoppers hinted at being their eventual cutie marks. This calls into question the certainty we've had before when it comes to what their eventual cutie marks will be. However, Twilight did say, learning for learning's sake, so it's entirely possible that these skills are unrelated to their cutie marks, which means that the CMC are starting to not just focus on their cutie marks, which I think is great. But whatever these skills are for, it's made clear that they still need work. Fast forward a bit, and Diamond Tiara enters the episode to provide her usual role of being a bitch. Nothing surprising or noteworthy there. However, when Sweetie Belle lets slip that they have been spending time with THE Princess Twilight, Diamond Tiara and Silverspoon do a complete 180. I like how this conflict is almost introduced accidentally by the CMC. I was worried that, especially since they were just antagonizing Diamond Tiara for building herself up on someone else, that the CMC immediately doing this with Twilight would just come off as a really obvious and stupid lesson. But that's not the case. Sweetie Belle didn't really mean to brag about their time with Twilight, it was just a spur-of-the-moment comeback to Diamond Tiara's bragging. In fact, throughout the entire episode, the CMC never really intentionally used Twilight's fame to push their own popularity, it just sort of happens. The error on their part comes from the fact that once things do start snowballing, they don't really do anything to stop it until it's too late. Another thing I really like is Diamond Tiara's and Silverspoon's instant idolization of Twilight. It antagonizes the typical shallow Disney view of princesses. They're being all like, oh, she's a princess now, and that makes her totally awesome. And, oh my gosh, a princess lives there, and I'm about to go see her. <laughs> this is the sort of archetype that the show actively tries to defy with Twilight, and this episode in particular does a fantastic job of defying this archetype. So Diamond Tiara and Silverspoon's visit to Twilight doesn't exactly go as planned, but it ultimately worked out for the CMC, because now everyone wants in, and the CMC are the most popular kids in school. Again, keep in mind that it was Diamond Tiara who told all the classmates, and not the CMC. So the CMC aren't intentionally boosting their own popularity, it just sort of happens. And since they can't possibly bring their whole class to Twilight's house, they instead arrange to take Twilight out to lunch where the classmates will get a chance of seeing her. Here, we see that Twilight is a very messy eater. Once again, this scene helps defy the pretty purple pony princess idea. That theme is decidedly less subtle in this scene, but it's still important to have. So the CMC's luncheon with Twilight, again, doesn't exactly go as planned, but it ultimately works out for the CMC, when, through a misunderstanding, the classmates assume that where the CMC goes, Princess Twilight goes. Once again, it's important to note that the CMC did not perpetuate this misunderstanding themselves. 
and instead find their popularity being boosted by accident. Things start to catch up with the CMC pretty quick though, now that all the classmates are starting to expect that they'll get to see the princess in exchange for all the favors they've been doing. To make a long story short, there is now an angry, yet adorable, mob of school children outside Twilight's door. Twilight, somewhat naively, assumes that all these children must be here because they want to learn new things as a part of Twilight time. It reminds me of Sweet and Elite, sort of. I think Twilight has a tendency to just assume the best out of her friends. Right here, I don't think it even crossed Twilight's mind that all these children could just be here because she's a princess, and when she does find out, she seems genuinely upset at the notion that other people would consider her princesshood to be anything significant. And yet, her tone with the CMC isn't angry, it's that sort of not angry, just disappointed tone. So while Twilight tries to avoid acting all aloof like a princess, and she certainly doesn't like being treated as one, Twilight still acts like a princess in terms of leadership. She's taken a page from Celestia's book and has been mentoring others on the magic of friendship as well as just teaching them things in general. And she's been doing this consistently all season. So next time I see someone complaining that Twilight doesn't act like a princess, or yeah, being a princess hasn't done anything for Twilight's character, she's just a shell of a film self, I'm going to punch them in the face. Or link them to this video. That works too. Anyway, final thoughts. I love this episode. Easily one of my favorites of season 4. Still not as great as Pinkie Pride, but still fantastic. If you had any doubts about Twilight becoming a princess being the greatest thing ever, then this episode will surely put those doubts to rest. And the CMC are great in this episode too. From the start, they know that using someone else's popularity to boost yours was the wrong thing to do. But it just sort of happened to them by accident. So their heart really was in the right place the entire time. Sweetie Belle? Remember a moment ago when you asked me to give you a chance? Uh, no, actually, I don't remember that. And I'm looking through the script right here, and I don't see anywhere where Sweetie Belle said to give them a chance. It's not, it's, it's not in here.